this. And propositional logic, which is what we're studying right now, we're going to do predicate logic next week. But propositional logic is the logic that you use in programming. It's extremely important to understand it. And what propositional logic is, it's working with propositions. Propositions are statements that are either true or false. They're not a maybe. It's a statement that can be identified as either true or false. Today is Wednesday, is a proposition. It happens to be true. Today is Friday, is also a proposition, but it happens to be false. Okay? Those are propositions. There's an elephant in the room. Oh, one to remember, I like that one. There's an elephant in the room, is a proposition. It's obviously false, but it is a proposition. Yes, okay. and we're having trouble with numbers of seats, so if you don't mind, just work with us, okay? Um, now, with propositional logic, it is an algebra. And the algebra that most of you have learned in the past, that some of you like and some of you say, oh no, not again, um, was the algebra of numbers. It was an algebra of numbers, and it had two operations addition and multiplication. And those that think subtraction and division are operations, I will tell you I was a math major in college before I learned they're not. Subtraction was a convenience for elementary schools when we taught the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we didn't have negative numbers. So if we wanted to say Bobby had 10 donuts and gave away two, we had to do something to identify how you do the take away two. When you got to high school, then you learned about negative numbers. And this causes a confusion because high school teachers don't know what I'm about to say, which is the simplicity of algebra. And that is, forget subtraction. Because the students would say, wait a minute, I can add 10 and, po and a negative 2 and get 8, or I can take 10 and subtract 2 and get 8, which one should I do? Well, when you get to algebra, real numbers, and integers and so forth, you should use negative numbers, not subtraction. Division is the same way, by the way, it causes people to hate fractions after a while because uh, that's because we forget what they are. By the way, a fraction, the number on the bottom is how many there are in a whole pie. So if there's an eight on the bottom, there's eight slices in the pie. The number on the top is how many you're talking about. So if the number on top is three, it's three of those eight slices. And if you can begin to visualize that in your mind, fractions will never be a problem again. Okay? That's what a fraction is. Uh, so anyway, what about the algebra then of logic? It is an algebra with two operations. And the two operations are and and or. And those of you that have done some pro some uh, Programming know about those two operations. You've seen them, but there is there is some discipline behind those. If you look at an AND statement and you take two propositions, and sometimes we use um, letters, just like algebra, right? X and Y. We use P and Q and R. There's no significance there. I can use X and Y. But in fact, you'll sort of see next week we use X and Y. Why I don't know. The author did. It. I can blame someone else. So at any rate, um, if I have two propositions, this might be there's an elephant in the room, this might be this today is Friday, those are propositions. And I put them together in an and statement, the truth of that and statement is only true if both of those are true. Okay? So both of these must be true. So if I said to you, today is Wednesday and there's an elephant in the room, that should be obvious to you. That's a false statement, wouldn't it? Okay. So for an and statement, both of them must be true. If only one of them is false, or if both of them are false, it's false. Okay. For an or statement, it's the other way around. If I said there's an elephant in this room or it's Wednesday, you'd say, okay, it's Wednesday, so I guess that's right. 
I don't care about the elephant in the room thing, right? Does everybody see that? So for an or statement, only one of them needs to be true. And in fact, for an or statement to be false, both of them must be false. So we show this in something called a truth table. And to build a truth table, what we do is we take the individual propositions. By the way, when we put them together, it's still called a proposition. It's a compound proposition. Uh, we put the two together, and then we can analyze the more complex propositions. And you're going to see this on the quiz. So, the P can be true or false, but I want to get all combinations of T's and F's for these two uh, variables. So what I'll do is I'll talk about the case where they're both true, where the P is true and the Q is false, where the P is false and the Q is true, or where they're both false. Now that's every co possible combination of T and F for those two. And what I did was I took half of the uh, rows here and made them T's and half F's. And I made these then alternate half of what these were. So if these are two and two, this is one and one, okay? And the reason I say that is if I had R, a third proposition, I would end up with eight rows. And that would be four T's and four F's. Two T's, two F's, two T's, two F's, and then T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F, okay? That's the way to put the truth table together. The only reason for that is you'll know at the end you've got every combination of T and F for those variables. Let's see. Question? Okay. All right, now, um, and of course the, the rule is you take the number of simple propositions and the number of rows is two to that power. So I have two here, two to the second power is four, one, two, three, four rows. If I had had three, two to the third is eight, then you would have eight rows. Okay? Now I'm trying to go kind of fast because I want to get all this done and also go over the quiz. So am I losing anybody at this point? Am I okay with this? Now, what did I say about the and? I said it was true only when both are true, right? So what I do is I come back here and I look at these. A T, T, O. Oh, well, that's when it's true. But a T and an F, no, for an and statement, that's going to be false. An F and a T, no, that's going to be false. And an F and an F, that's obviously going to be false. So notice that. This then shows pictorially what I said up here, that the and statement is true only when both of the propositions are true. <coughs> so going across the rows, you're looking at a situation based on the propositions. Okay? Now the or statement, well, let's see. It's true when both are true. But it's also true if only one of them is true. So here we still have one of them true. But it's false when both are false. And notice that pictorially now we have the or statement is false only when both are false. Okay, does that help? Group two? Are you comfortable with that? Anybody not? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I remember the quiz, it had a squiggly line. Yeah, oh well, yeah, the squiggly line. I didn't have to, I didn't have to do this. What is squiggly P? Not P. That's not P. It's called a till, T-I-L-D-E. Right, but I don't use those words, those are Latin. <laughs> yes, that is, it's a tilde. Sometimes you're on tilde. So anyway, and it's on the keyboard, by the way. I, uh, I was trying to do something last night, and I needed it. And I found it's way over to the left hand course, the very first key at the top is the other case. But yeah, that means not P. So what does not P mean? Well, if I added 
not p over here. By the way, that's not a third proposition because it's based on one of the ones that's already there. So you don't need to have eight. But not p is the opposite of p. So if I said there's an elephant in the room and you knew that was false, the opposite of that is there's not an elephant in the room. And that's true. So when this is true, this is false and vice versa. So this is true, this is false. This is false, this is true. That's false, this is true. So what if I added then not P or Q? Well, we know that the OR statement is only false when both are false, right? So what I want to do is I want to compare not P and Q. So here's not P, here's Q. It's only false when both are false. Here is where both of them are false, so that's when they're <coughs> false. Up here, up here, one of them is true. Down here, both of them are true, and down here, one of them is true. So these are T's here. I'm glad you asked that question because there is something I missed. And that's the if statement. So we talked about that last time. And the if statement is written, P implies Q, if P then Q, however you want to read that, it's the same thing. Okay. Again, big in program. Yes, sir. Are these just general shorthand symbols for writing the logic? Yes, absolutely. And you will find that people who are putting together their uh, design for their applications will sometimes use these. Or you'll see them in a flowchart. Okay? Yeah. So absolutely, it's a way of doing the math behind the program. If you make a mistake in your program, and you probably you normally see that because the output doesn't match what you expected it to be, right? Now you're going back through your program trying to figure out why it worked that way. This is a good way to symbolically tear down your program and make it easier. Guess who else learns this stuff, by the way? I was thinking about this this morning. Do you know electronics engineers learn this? And it's because transistors are either off or on. And when you look at a electrical diagram, you can actually use logic in fact, they call them logic diagrams, to lay out how the electronic system is going to work. Oh, because logic gates can use gates. Yeah, you use gates, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you can simplify a, an electronic uh, uh, circuit by using logic. You put it in logic first, then use the rules of logic to simplify it. For instance, knowing that this and by the way, that are the same. That's interesting. So why is it that that's the same? Well, if I said that P implies Q, and let's say P is, um, this is uh, discrete math, and this is Wednesday, okay? So if this is discrete math, then it implies that this is Wednesday. Oh, wait a minute. That's not a good one because we're, we're going to have a problem with that on Monday. Um, okay, well, this is discrete math and it meets in uh, J161. How about that? Okay. So now when this is true and that is true, then the implication is true, right? Okay. How about um, this is discrete math and it meets Outdoors on the quad. You may hope so some days. But it doesn't, does it? So that would be obviously false. Well, what about this is uh, introduction to programming and it meets in J161. Is that true or false? True. true. And why is it true? The first part is false. The first part is false. So this is, you're all from one section one, I suppose. You remember that from Monday? Yeah, it's interesting. 
But you, if you had sit, just seen this for the first time, you would say, I don't know because I don't know where introduction to software or introduction program means, right? If you don't know, it's true because you can't prove it's false. Interesting thing that Aristotle set up when he defined the logic. But the better part to, to look at is this is actually not a new operation, just like subtraction and division are not new operations. They're based on addition and division and uh, multiplication. This is not a new operation. It's defined by not P or Q. That's the way it was set up. So it's better sometimes when you're confused or not sure what my if statement's going to do in a program is to say, well, what would happen if the first part's true and the second part is false? Because that's the only time uh, when the first part is true and the second part is false is the only time that it's false. Notice I went back to P, not to not P. P implies Q is defined as not P or Q. So we're dealing with P and Q in the implication. When P is true and Q is false is the only time that you can say that the implication is false. Let's do this. It has the same truth table as the not P or Q. Okay. So, now that was a, um, what do you call it? anyway, it was a quick overview of what I did Monday. So, in section two, are you okay with that so far? Okay. Now, section one, those that had questions on the quiz, raise your hand again. Okay. Which number? Uh. Number eight? Okay. And who else? Yes, sir. Number ten. Number ten. And who else? Number six. Number six? Yes, in fact. Number seven. Number seven? Yes. Five. Number five? Yes. Yours is on the board? Okay. Any others? Sometimes I have the one in the back of the room that says all the above. That's good. Okay. my speech on grades versus knowledge, but section one knows that my goal for you is knowledge, so I don't worry about giving you answers on, on quizzes and things, but I will tell you, if you, take a, if you don't take the quiz the first time before the class we're going to answer questions, you're not going to learn as much. So taking the quiz or the test the first time and find out what you don't know come to class curious, why did I miss that? And that you will learn, I guarantee you it works better. Okay? So if you wait for class to get some answers and go back and get a better grade on the first time you take the quiz or test, that really isn't helping you because you get two tries. So, that again was a 10 minute lecture in 30 seconds. So let's see if we can do these. So number five, let's take a look at it.
you all see that in the back? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, use a truth table to determine which of the following is true for this proposition. P and, now they use an ampersand sometimes because the and is not on the keyboard. Not Q. Implies not P. So what do we have here? How many basic variables do I have? Two. Two, P and Q, right? The nots are just variances of those. So I have P and I have Q. So I have also not P and I have not Q. So T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. So not P is opposite of P, so that's false, false, true, true, and not Q would be false, true, false, true. Now what I normally do is I take and break this down. So I want to look at the P and not Q. So now I'm looking at this column and this column, the first and the fourth. And it's an AND statement, so I know that an AND statement is true only when both are true. Well, here one of them is false. Here they're both true. Here they're both false. And here at least one of them is false. So that's the P and not Q problem. Then I can look at P and not Q implies not P. Okay. Now I know that an implication is only true when the first part's true and the second part is false. And now I'm looking at this column and the not P column, this one. So I have false implies false, that's false. I have a true implies false, that is the case. I'm sorry. False implies false is true, isn't it? Because when this part is false, implication is true. But here I have a true implies false. That's the case where it's false. Here I have a false implies true. That's true. And here I have a false implies true. So that's true. Okay? Am I okay? Okay. So, which one of the truth tables or which one of the statements is, is true? Well, it's not always true, because we found in the second row, it's false. How about the proposition is true when P is true? Well, we have to then go back to P here. It's true for this one, but it's not. Here's P, but that's not true, right? So they're not both true at the same time. Uh, how about the proposition is true when P is true and Q is false? Well, let's see. When P is true and Q is false, is this column right here, and it's false, isn't it? So that second answer is not right. The third one, the proposition is never true. Well, no, that's not right. So I think the next answer is the right one. I think you just missed that second one. Did I miss one? I just missed that second one. The second one. The proposition is true when P is false, huh? Yes. Thank you. P is false in these two rows here, and our proposition is true. Okay. So that's how you do that. Who had number five? Is that the back? Do you see that now? Okay. It's looking across the rows. That's the key. If for any given incident, you look across the rows. Okay. That's five. Let's look at six. Where are the quizzes? 
Huh? You're in the quizzes. You're not on the questions. I think that's the question, isn't it? Oh, was that? Yeah. Oh. I was worried the same thing. I, I agree with you there for a minute. Yeah, please let me know if anything's like that. I'm getting old. Okay, use a truth table to determine which of the following is true for this proposition. Not P or not Q implies not P. Okay, so it's not P or not Q, right? First 
row is true of both. Second row is true for both. The third row, I have a false. <coughs> and the last row, I have two falses. So that would be that column. Now, the implication. The implication is only false when this is true, implying a false, right? So I have two Gs here, the not P, are false in both those cases. You can see here. So I have a T implying a false, T implying a false. Those are both falses. But down here, my first part of the proposition is false. That means that it is true without even looking at the second part. That's another way of looking at it. The NIF statement, the first part's false, don't even look at what it implies. It's considered a true statement. And that's hard to get your mind around sometimes, but that is the way it works. Okay, so what are my options here? The proposition is false when P is false. No. When P is false, it's true. So let's go down. The proposition is never true. No, we know it's true sometimes. Uh, the proposition is false if P is true. That is accurate. When P is true, the proposition is false. And lastly, just to make sure, the proposition is always true. No, the proposition is not always true. Have I done enough of these so that you understand now how to do the truth tables? Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> Thank you for being honest, because that's what I needed. Okay, so this was... Number seven, right. And so let's look at number eight. Okay. So I think the only difference here is I'm not P here. Not P and P or P twice. Okay. So. Change those two columns. So we're looking at not P, and we're looking at the Q or P, and it's an AND connector. With an AND, it's false only when both are false. So we're not P, not P is false on these first two columns. So right away, we know that this is false. Here we have two T's, but here's the only place where they're both true. Here we have one false. Okay? So that would be the truth table for that one. Now, this implies this is false only when this is true, implying a false. So what we're going to do is look where this is true, and it's only in this row right here, isn't it? And what about not P? Not P is also true, isn't it? So that is true. But up here, this is true, this is true, and that's true. Oh, what do we end up with there? Do you know the name for that? Anybody? It's called a tautology. It's always true. Okay. I did it right. So that's a tautology. So let's see if that's one of the answers. The proposition is false if P is true and Q is false. Well, it's never false. The proposition is always true. There you go. Okay. The proposition is never true. The proposition is false when P is false. Okay? Did that help? Get there, right? Now, do you see the reason why I do the quizzes twice, allow you to do the quizzes twice? When you go home tonight and try the quiz again, sometimes that's when the light turns on. It's in the prime trying to do it again. And okay, now I get why you did that in class. Right? So hopefully that's the way it's going to work. Are right, any questions that I didn't? Oh, somebody had number 10, right? 
And number 10 has to do with validity. Now, what does validity mean? Validity means that given what they gave me, the answer is always true. So, given that if there's a tractor trailer accident on I-75, I-75 is blocked and Highway 41 is blocked. Okay? That's the proposition. That's one of them. The other thing they gave me was Highway 41 is not blocked. And the conclusion is, therefore, there's no tractor-trailer accident on I-75. Right? Now, some of y'all can think this through. You probably tried to, right? It gets to be a little hard to, well, wait a minute, what about this case? So this is where this is good. And the reasoning on these arguments is dangerous to relationships. Because if you start thinking this way when you're talking to somebody and they tell you, well, I know this and I know this, therefore this, and you're going to in your mind say, well, there's a truth table behind that. Oh, no, 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 here's a case where it isn't true. Okay? So what you do is you don't argue emotionally. You say, wait a minute, here's a case where both those things are true that you gave me, but your conclusion's not true. And the other party will probably say, oh, you're right. Unless they're emotionally attached to what they just said, in which case, let it go. <laughs> go somewhere else and drop, drop your conclusion, if, if you like that relationship. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got three basic propositions. There's an accident on I-75. I-75 is blocked. Highway 41 is blocked. Those are three propositions, aren't they? So we could say accident. We could say, uh, let's say 75, and let's use 41, so that we can symbolically remember those propositions. Those are, those are blocked, right? That's 75 blocked, that's 41 blocked. Okay. Now, how many basic propositions do I have? You have eight, don't you? So, well, eight rows, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jumped ahead. I have three propositions, two to the third is eight, so I need eight rows. So I make half of these true. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I make this one T, F, T, F, plus T, T, F, F. T, T, F, F, and T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. Now, that should give me every, every combination from all true to all false. Now, if there's an accident on 75, 75 is blocked and Highway 41 is blocked, well, let's put together the AND statement first. So I've got 75 AND 41. Now that's an AND statement, so it's only true when both are true. Well, both are true here, and both are true here, but they're false here and false here. And then lastly, oops. lastly, I have accident implies 75 and 41. And I've also got not 41, don't I? Isn't that the other thing that they gave us? Highway 41 is not blocked. So, A implies this is false only if this is true implying a false. So let's look at the T's here. T implies T is true. T 
implies false is false. T implies false is false. And T implies false is false. But here we have all falses. Of this, so this is going to be false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Now, to get the answer here, what I want is that these two given things are true. If there's an accident, that's going to be a true statement because that's what the person said. And Highway 41 is not blocked. That's a true statement. I'm going to accept it. And the reason is, I want to say, if those things are true, does that point to this being true? Because that's their conclusion. So what I'm interested in is where 41, I mean, where, uh, yeah, where this is true and this is true at the same time. And what I find is that there's two cases. This is where they're both true, and here is where they're both true. Everybody see that? Uh, yes. We have run over time. Yeah, I know. I'm going to real quickly get through this and then get you go. Do you have another class to get to? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm right, right there. Uh, therefore, there's no tractor trailer accident on 75, meaning that this should be false, right? So in this case, it's false. In this case, it's false. Therefore, 